say thank you so much for hosting and for offering and inviting me to, 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 to offer this. Yeah, I think this, I love this stuff. I think it's, you know, like I said, I've been working with my body. Well, the body's been my path, yeah, for <laughs> sanity for, for over, probably almost close to 50 years. And um, out of all the work I've done, which is mountains of different stuff with different people over the, all those many years, I think this is the most profound work without a doubt. This is the probably the most beneficial and have the biggest sense of well-being. Not to say all that other stuff didn't help me. Okay, um, so um, I think you all know about the body lines. I think, you know, we've done that. We, I think most of you have been here for the lateral line. There's the lateral line, the one that goes from the baby toe up to your, up to your temporalis, yeah? Up to the side of the skull. And yeah, there it is. Um, See, baby toe, it's all one thing. It all, yeah, it's all connected. You're connected, fascially connected. You're a great big net, like a big jellyfish, you know? And, there, and, that, and there's the back body line. So there's that from the center of the foot, the plantar fascia going up into the gastroc, yeah, and back into the hammies, yeah. And then it goes through the thoracolumbar fascia and where it crosses, you know, it continues and crosses and goes up the spine, yeah, on either side of the neck, attaches to the base of the skull, over oh, the, ap the aponeurosis, the skull covering, right to the eyebrows. All that screen work, all that sitting, yep, needs to be rehydrated and connected. There's the deep, oh no, this is the superficial front line. Superficial front line comes up the inside of the legs, the quads, yeah. People who bicycle, climb, walkers. There you go. It's connected fascially again through the pelvic bone. So the pelvis has fascia surrounding it, the ep ep the episium or something. Anyway, it comes fascially connected. Then it joins again deep, deep into the rectus abdominis, which tucks behind the other abdominal muscles there and comes up the front of the body into the throat, into the sides of the neck and the jaw and the side of the face. So, you know, this can be related to jaw problems, dental problems, you know, there can be a huge knock on effect. You know, we talk about the body line starting with the center of the foot, but actually it could start at the head just as well. So any distortion in the head, any, any a lot of dental work, jaw problems, tea, you know, uh, all that um, mandibular stuff, there's a whole series for that. It's a little bit more involved. And here, this is a little bit what we're going to work with today. It's a little bit of the spiral line, yeah? And it crosses in the front from each shoulder to each hip bone on the side of the ribs there, okay? And it also crosses in the back body and it crosses at the top of the neck as well. From the, and we're going to do a lot with the levitated scapulae, okay? There it is there, you know, where it goes from the top of the shoulder blade over to the other side of the skull. This is called the star of the show. Yeah, you know, this area here, there's a big plexus there where there's loads and loads of fascial uh, areas that uh, position the head on the scalp, position the shoulder blades in relation to the neck and the skull, but also into relation to each other and to the forearm lines. And of course, continuing into the front body and the back body. So it's, you know, really important area. You could work from the neck down or the feet up. We're going to work from the neck down today. It's going to be easier, I think. And then we'll maybe hopefully end with the feet. Um, there's the deep front line. So there's the one, the condition of the deep front line. So this is underneath the superficial front line. This has to do with the floor of the pelvis. We're going to do a lot of work there today, I hope. And, and this inner, the adductors, abductors. And uh, again, um, into under the ribs and again into the sternocleomastoid. So again, the positioning of the head on the scalp, okay? And it goes into the tongue. And this is the, the gut related to the eyes and the senses and the tongue, okay? Um, there's the diaphragms, the eight diaphragms. So we've looked at those. We work all of those. Almost every satya movement is manipulating them. Yeah? So they're very important. So the and in walking, because we're bipedal, that diaphragm of the foot is probably the most important. What's going on in the sole of your feet, yeah? Okay, so now I'll just briefly, uh, most of the people have the balls. So fantastic, if you have the balls, use them. 
If you don't have the balls, you're going to use a rolled blanket, which is going to be too hard for some things. So if it feels too much, please just remove the blanket and do the movement without any props. We've been doing those movements for three weeks now. They're extremely beneficial. You will not be getting less, okay? You, and, and actually the body needs a couple of months of doing those movements, really. But I wanna introduce the balls because they are, again, they're a sensory tool and they give more. They, they are gonna grab the skin and they're going to, you're gonna get a lot more of this uh, fascial movement but they have to be the right kind of ball. So we use a blanket for a couple of things. And I'll just, and I did say earlier that if you find that the ball work on the ground is too strong because the body weight is sitting on the ball, it becomes quite loaded, you can learn to work on the wall. So I'm just gonna demonstrate briefly for those people who have the balls already, you can play around at home. You know, you're allowed to play. And you take the ball, yeah? And you put it in the position that, you know, and you, and you move. So you kind of get yourself a little bit away from the wall. You use the weight of your body. Yeah, you use the weight of your body. And then you try different movements. You, you let the ball, you compress. I'm on one side of my spine here. I'm not on the middle of my spine. I'm over to one side between my shoulder blade and my spine in that gully. And you can do really simple, just compress, just lean. Then you can start to move the arms. We're going to do this lying down. But like I said, if you find that it's too strong, you can come up and do it at the wall. Yeah, you take the arm in different positions. You can circle the elbow. All the same things we're gonna do lying down. You can roll, yeah, stripping, cross fibering. You can push the ball down a little bit lower, bend your knees and come up on your toes and you can do your stripping going with the line of the fiber of the muscle or going against the line, cross fiber, yeah? So you can play around, feels fantastic. You can do one ball at a time on each side, or if you're very coordinated and fit, whatever, you can try the two, <laughs> try to not drop them. And they can go all the way down because they're soft, because they have a lot of give, and because you can control how much weight is on the ball when you're using them at the wall, there you can moderate the, the practice. So that's why I'm showing it. That's a, mo that's a modification. And, and, and in some, for some, getting into some areas, it's more beneficial than lying down because you can moderate the weight. So you learn to play with them and to remember that if it feels too strong, you should stop. Anything that feels too strong or awkward or painful in any way, take the balls away and just do the movement, okay? So this is a little bit of a, but so many people were so good and went out and got their balls. I definitely want to use them today. Okay, we're going to start in the usual way. We're going to start in Shavasana, in our... And, you know, hopefully no one has anything going on that I should know about because, you know, you're not really supposed to be in this. This is not a medical class, so just please be very mindful of yourself and take responsibility for yourself, okay? So we'll start with this Satya. We'll start with lying, just lying in our shava and just sensing and feeling. So letting the arms fall by your sides, letting the legs extend, unless that's painful, in which case you can bend the knees. But it's good to get this check and recheck. So we have, we're finding our signature shape. What does it feel like today in here? So remember, this is all interoception. So it's the opposite of what the world requires of us. So it's not about doing. It's about being. So we learn to go out of proprioception and into interoception. So what we're interested in is the felt sense of the body as opposed to what the body can do. So it's the felt sense that we're interested in. So we're cultivating sensitivity and awareness. We are cultivating both of those things. So just releasing your bones, let go of the weight of your bones, let everything drop into gravity. So when we change our relationship to gravity, everything changes. We start to unload the joints. And this in itself is beneficial to just lie down. 
and lie down with awareness rather than lie down and, and conk out, yeah, and go, go away, yeah, so we've got to pay attention to how things tend to feel. The more attention you give, the, the larger the brain maps. So the, the brain is interested in fascia because it has nine times more nerve endings than anywhere else. So it's interested in fascia. It stays fascinated with the fascia if you keep paying attention to the movement. So just feel the weight of your bones, letting go. Just notice the shape of your legs, the heels, how the heel bone is placed. Maybe one leg rolls out more than the other. Just feel the calves and the thighs perhaps and the sacrum what does the sacral bone feel like you know do you feel that you're tipping does it is the pelvis rolling to one is the leg rolling out or is the pelvis tipping to one side or the other so just begin so we're not trying to fix anything we're just noticing our signature shape this is how we are most of the time so getting familiar with it will help us to notice also when it changes And the lumbar spine should not really be touching the floor. There should be a natural curve here. We want to have uh, curves in the cervical and lumbar spine. That's what absorbs shock when we walk. So, you know, we don't want to lose those. And then feel the rib cage, how that's related to the floor and the arm bones, the backs of the hands, the shoulders, the shoulder girdle. And especially around the shoulder blades and the shoulders, just feel if one shoulder, if they, are they lying the same way on the floor? Are they lying flat? Or is one shoulder blade flatter than the other? Is one sort of curving away or digging into the floor? So it could be slightly pro protracted or retracted on one side. And the skull, notice the weight of your skull and how the head rests on the floor. And if it's rolling to one side or the chin is tipping down or tipping up or whatever's going on. Just sense and feel. Sense and feel. So we're going to start with up. So we're going to start with our first movement, which is SI release one. So this is sacroiliac release one. Uh, this is a, to do with the back body line, which is the supportive line. So it's always really a good idea to hydrate that line because it does most of the work for us in our daily life. So we want to pay attention to it. And uh, so uh, SI release one, or, uh, yeah, so toes to the ceiling. We'll start with the right leg, toes to the ceiling, extend the heel away from you. So lengthen the heel, scrub the heel on the floor. So the leg is like somebody's got a hold of your heel. Sometimes if you go to a massage therapist, they'll cup your heels in their hands and they'll drag the heel forward. It feels like that. Let the other foot toes to the ceiling. So opening up the plantar fascia, we're stretching the sole of the foot to scrub the heel forward. Now don't jam the knee. Heel pops off the floor. This is all gliding and sliding. These movements are all about glide and slide. So toes to the ceiling, inhale, extend the right heel forward, lengthen the back of the leg, and release it. Yeah? On the exhalation, let it slide back. So again, it's the breath controls the speed and the length of the movement. We all have different respiratory capacity. So, you know, you won't be going with my words necessarily do your own rhythm so it's really important for you to pay attention to the rhythm of your breath let the toes come to the ceiling extend the heel forward and begin to feel how that's moving the buttock flesh so start to feel that as the heel goes forward the leg lengthens that hip gets drawn down and the other hip slides up a bit so it's this gait this is walking without bending the knees and then the other side heel goes forward and you might notice a different shape on one side. So it feels really different for me on one side. I feel more movement around my inner groin in the front body, my deep front leg. And then on the other side is more my outer hips. And so I don't seem to engage that so much on the inside line. So there's an imbalance. So then right away I know, oh, that's interesting. It's different on my right than on my left. So I get interested in it. I pay attention. To, well, why is that different? And then I start to notice, oh, that foot's a bit sickled. So I don't really extend. I don't have the same 
you know, something's different on that side. So it's just good to notice, yeah, just notice, because we all, we all have imbalances. So we get familiar with that, we can get to really uh, make changes and then let go completely, just completely drop that, let the head, let the legs rest, feel any, so checking here for neurological flushing. So checking for any changes in sensation, any tingling, pulsing, vibrating, gurgle, size, changes in breath, uh, you know, as things release, okay? So that's something to look for. Okay, we're going to do, so we're going to do that, we're going to do, do some stuff with the arms and with the head as well. And I would say for those people who do have the yellow balls, we're going to put the balls just at the very top and to the outer edge of your shoulder blade. Now, you have the spine of the scapula, yeah? So, you know, ideally you don't sit up. I mean, you know, I'm sitting up so you can turn and just turn your head and look at me, but everybody else stay lying down. So you have the spine of the scapula. That's the bony bit that you can feel. The shoulder blade actually continues up above that, okay? So we want the balls to be above the spine of the scapula and not way in by the neck, not way in by the spine, but way out because there's something called a levitator scapula. That muscle goes up, that tendon ligament goes up and attaches to the base of the skull and to the first couple of cervical vertebra. Really important area for releasing the neck. Um, people who have the blanket, you could try putting your rolled blanket there, but please be, if it's too hard and feels uncomfortable, just give it a miss, okay? Just leave it alone. You know, if you're new to the work, just don't worry about anything. Just stay flat, okay? The movement is just as, be is all, yeah, it's beneficial regardless, prop or no prop, okay? But for the people who have the balls, now you've got these balls, so if I had, had a camera and I was looking down from the ceiling with the camera, I'd be able to see half of the ball. I'd be able to see the top half. So what it's doing is it's pushing it's actually getting into my trapezius there, and it's kind of separating the trapezius from the bones, kind of, and that's what we want. We want that to, you know, get some space, okay? And then really easy, I'm gonna stretch my right hand toward my right foot, and then let it come back, okay? And then stretch the left hand toward the left foot, and let it come back. So you can feel the balls, so first of all, you're just getting used to the compression. They, but because they're balls, they'll roll away from you a little bit. They'll roll away from you a little bit. The head is not turning. You're keeping the head centered, and uh, depending how tight your shoulders are. <laughs> yeah, and some of you maybe even have a little bit of a blanket under your head. The balls might be so high because of your how you where you carry because of dehydration of those tissues. The head may not relax comfortably on the floor. So you may need to put a little bit of folded blanket under your head. You just have to sense and feel. Don't get it, let it get too complicated. If it feels like too much, just leave the balls to one side. You know, we could always do another class with that. Okay, so reaching the hand down. Yeah, and letting the head stay stationary. So you're, you actually, what you're doing is you're massaging where that levator scapula, that big piece of tendon is very tender, is very fibrous. That's the one that stops the head from falling forward. And often if you're sitting and working at a screen, that muscle gets over tight, it gets hypertonic. Uh, and then you start to get neck problems, yeah? And that feels bad, yeah? Unpleasant, unpleasant uh, sensation. And then now we're going to do the same thing. So you're going to keep the balls to the eye. You might have to, like I said, you have to keep fiddling with them because they're balls. They roll around. They're moving. And not only are the balls moving, they're moving the tissue that they're, that they're grabbing. So the tissue is moving. Okay, so we're going to reach the arm and turn the head the opposite way. And then let the arm slide back. And then reach the arm and turn the head the opposite way. And let it slide back. So back and forth, you can do this movement very easily without the balls. So if they're a problem, if they're not working for you, just give them a miss. You can bring them back later. You know, don't create an issue for yourself. Yeah. Good.
And then just let that go. And let's bend up the knees. So we're going to bend the knees up. We're going to keep the balls where they are. We're going to take our arms straight to the ceiling. So it doesn't matter whether you have the balls or not. Again, you can use the rolled blanket if it feels too hard and it feels unpleasant, then remove that rolled blanket and just be flat. And let the arms go back and forth like seaweed underwater. So now feel, let the arms float side to side. Yeah, so you can feel the ball sort of rolling off the edges. Yeah. You sort of feel what's going on with the sensation on your shoulder blades. And let's take the arms now, reach the arms. So just do that a few times, you know, right and left, and then arms to the ceiling, palms facing forward, and slowly start to take your arms behind your back. Don't try to go to the floor. Just start to move your arms back. So taking the arms back, feeling the balls rolling up over the edge of the bone there, and then coming back down. So what that's doing is it's sculpting the tissue away from the bone. So it's getting into that place where the insertion and the origin of the tissue is. Yeah? So it's getting right to the root. Just do a few of those. Don't be nothing fancy. Just sense and feel what you sense and feel. And let's bend the arms, yeah? So let's let, let the elbows bend and let's do some circles. So just use your elbows like a big, like you're stirring up, like you're trying to push something away from you. So push you, so that's moving the shoulder blades. So it doesn't matter whether you're on balls or not, but it just gets you a little bit more release of having the ball shear those tissues away from the bones. So get hydrating where they attach. And then let's take the hips up a little bit. So just take your hips up a little bit off the floor, maybe uh, two centimeters. So press your feet firmly down. Make sure your feet are hip width apart, that your feet are level and parallel, and slightly wider than hips. So now you've got a little, what you're doing is you're dumping a bit of weight. You know, you're, let, you're loading up the tissue. So we're loading it now. And same thing, let the arms go back and forth. So let the arms go behind you and then come forward. So this works, you know, and if it's a blanket, it's too hard, just do it without any prop. Yeah, and then we're gonna go side to side with the arms. Same movements, yeah? So we do the same movements, we're just elevating the hips a little bit. And then we'll do some circles with the elbows. So you can do it flat. And you can do it elevated. Now, for people who are a bit stiffer, in some ways, you're getting more pressure with the balls, but the head is on the floor, so it's a bit less strain, yeah? Then you can go the other way, circle the um, elbows the other way. Yep. Then you can, do your, you can do your steeple work here, where you have your arms straight up, palms together. You now, if you're, if you're weaker and it's difficult for you to maintain the hips up, you can put a block under your pelvis, under your hips, and let them rest as you take the arms. So here I'm trying to keep my palms together. I'm sort of not letting my hands slip away so that I'm getting a little bit more work in my shoulder area. So it's more something going on around my shoulders. If I let the hands slip apart, that doesn't, doesn't really, yeah, it's different, okay. And then, and you can do your typewriter. Then you can hold your elbows and take the elbows side to side. These are all really good movements for your shoulder area and your neck area, regardless of whether you're on the balls or not, regardless of whether you have balls or not. So please don't think you're not getting any benefit because you are. Okay, let's scoochie those balls inside. So scoochie those balls now. Now put them on either side of your spine and hold your head in your hands. So the balls are on either side of your trapezius around the C7, T1, so the big junction there. You can put one hand under your head and put the other fingers on your neck bone there, your C7 that sticks out, yeah? And you can let your head go back and feel how those bones get buried, and then take your head forward and see how the bones stick out. There's your hunch, the dowager, dowager hunch. And then let the head go back, bury the bones, feel, feel the fingertips on there. So feel what happens 
Yeah. At C7, T1. There's a whole big story going on in there. And then keep the hands clasped. So hands are clasped. This is like what we did. You know, this is undulations, isn't it? So first of all, let's just open the elbows out and feel the ball squeeze. You know, people who aren't using the balls, I would say the blanket might be too strong. But what you could do is you push your elbows into the floor and squeeze your shoulder blades together. And then people who have the balls, just do it lighter. Don't do it, don't do it that as deep. And then in, exhale, pubic bone to face, face to pubic bone. This undulation two. So it's a modified undulation two. We're just opening the elbows a little bit. This is really just for that upper neck area. So we're on either side of the spine, below, just at C7, T1. Really important area, needs to be hydrated. Definitely needs some work. And I'm not really doing my lower body so much. I'm not really worried so much about doing I can do. You can do that pubic bone to face and activate that deep front line. That's the deep front line. Remember the core, the strength of the core determines the strength of the other lines. Yeah, so that, you know, you can add that or you could just stay with the arm movement. Just keep it simple. Good. And then you can load. So here we go. We've got our head in our hands. <laughs> and we're going to lift our hips up a little bit. Oh, dear. Okay, just a little bit. 10 centimeters. Don't go too high. And now I'll try opening and closing the elbows. Okay, just nice and easy. If that feels too much, hips back on the ground. If that feels too strong, hips back down on the ground. Hold the weight of your head in your hands. Good. Depends how strong you are. I think most people probably need to come down and rest their head. Yeah, let's do that. Let's all do that. Let's come down, rest your head on the floor, let your arms go by your side. The ball's kind of like, you know, really pokey here. And we're going to move the balls down. So just roll to your side and push the balls down. So now they come to the inside top edge of your shoulder blade. And again, uh, if you don't have the balls, not to worry, because we're going to do undulate. So you're going to hold your head in your hands. Some people can put, push a little bit with their feet. So you're just going to go back and forth. You're just going to go back and forth like a couple of inches. So I'm just I'm elevating my hips. I'm using my feet to push back and forth. And the blanket will be much too hard. I wouldn't do this with a blanket. I really would not do this with a blanket. Don't try this with a blanket. The people who are flat, yeah, you could do your undulations. You stick with your undulation movement. You stick with undulation too, because that's going to move that area. The other people are stripping. It's like you're stripping the, the muscles here. You're stripping. You're going with the line of the three huge muscles that go from the top of the pelvis to the neck. Okay. Everybody rest your hips on the ground. And then people who have the balls, you're going to move the balls now slightly down and out into your shoulder blade. So you have the balls uh, now right in the middle of your shoulder blade. So they're on your shoulder blades. So we're all going to lie in this side scrub position. So here we are, we're lying on our back. Our knees are bent. They're wide, slightly wider than our hips. And this is called side scrub. So the people who have the balls under your back, you take your elbows up. You, you make a basket for your head, and you keep your upper body slightly elevated. Keep these floating ribs down. That's the truth for everybody. Everybody watch out for poking the floating ribs up. Keep the ribs in the body. Keep them soft. And then people who have the balls, you're going to make a basket for your head. People who don't have the balls, you're lying flat on your back. Your elbows are out to the side. Your hands are clasped behind your head. And as you inhale, you're going to spin and take your right elbow to the wall behind you on a diagonal. And as you exhale, you come back to center. And then inhale and spin. So you spin, pin, and mobilize. Okay. So that ball is grabbing onto the tissue for people who have the balls. People who don't have the balls, the blanket is you're sliding and gliding on the blanket. This is opening up the side body, the lateral line from the baby toe all the way up the side of the face, the side of the skull, into the arm lines, through the shoulder area, and definitely the intercostals, the side ribs. So this is breath. This is about releasing the stress pattern 
in the body. This promotes sleep. This is really important issue is that you downloading the central nervous system and uploading the parasympathetic systems so that you are building immunity, you're building immune strength, you're opening the canopy of the lungs here. You're opening the side lungs, the intercostals, and you're also working the uh, back of the ribs, you know, where it joins the spine, so they can unhook. Okay, good. And then just let your head rest down, and people who have the balls, you can just move them down, all the way down. We're gonna I'm not gonna, I'm gonna skip a bit. I'm gonna skip a little bit. Okay. Let's take the balls away. So take the balls away. Let yourself rest on the floor. Sense and feel now your upper body. And every, you can stretch your legs out, shava, if that's comfortable. If not, keep the knees bent. So now really sense and feel any neurological flushing through the arms, any, everywhere and anywhere. Just feel what you feel. Feel what you feel. Mm. But looking for neurological flushing, looking for tingling, pulsing, throbbing. And that's release, yeah. That's nerve release. That's you know, that means you're the feedback is going to the brain and coming back down to the those areas and you're improving your brain maps. Okay, so now we're going to bend up our knees again. So bend up your knees, take your feet flat to the floor. You're going to do some undulation. So we'll all lift up our pelvis. And the people who are using a rolled blanket, I think you can put your rolled blanket now right at the top of your sacrum. So we're above the SI joint. Yeah, so you're right in the what they call the P, the PSIS. Well, a little bit higher than that. So you're right at the bony bit, the top of your pelvis, just below your waist. Yeah? So there's the navel, and just down from there, right on the edge of the bones, okay? And just rest. First of all, just rest. Allow the body weight to load into the prop whether it's a rolled blanket or the balls. Again, if it feels too strong, if the blanket is too hard, it doesn't feel good to you, it's unpleasant, made not unpleasant sensation, please remove it and just be flat, okay? All of these movements still work. Huh? And we're gonna to start to, we're gonna do up slip, down slip. So this is, this is the same thing we were pushing the heel forward before, now we're gonna push the shin of the leg. The very top of the shin, like there's a big button. You want to push the button. One knee goes forward, one shin goes forward, and the other hip comes back, and then other side. So you walk it out. You're walking it out. We'll come back to this. We'll come back to this. And now go side to side. So now swing your hips. So you're sculpting people who have the ball or the blanket. You're sculpting. Go slower if you have the blanket. Now also, if you have the balls, if you're not used to it, they move around, you have to reposition them. So I'm really letting my hips swing as though my pelvis were in a big uh, spaghetti bowl with the, the shallow sides. So I want, you know, I want to swing right around. So that ball is going to massage, or the leg is going to massage where the glute medius and maximus comes together. So it's opening up the, okay, and then bring it back. Now, I move the balls down a little bit. So now move the balls down an inch or, inch or two. So you're on the piriformis, the SI joint. So you're right where the sacrum and the ilium meet. And again, we're gonna do up slip, down slip. So we're gonna push the shin of the leg forward. So this is a little more uh, intense. So if it doesn't feel good, stop. Yeah, so pushing one shin forward, letting that opposite hip come toward its own armpit. So now you're hydrating the head. So what you're doing is you're compressing. You're adding a compressol. Yeah, you're pumping. Yeah, compression, decompression. So you're lengthening one side and shortening the other side, like an accordion, just like a little squeeze box. Yeah, that's what you're doing. Yeah, so you're oh, stretching the area from the bottom rib to the top of the hip, which is an area that gets really, really imprisoned from sitting. It's really bad for sitting. Okay. 
And then we're going to we'll come back to this. Okay, so lift the hips up gently. So actually, oh, let's see. All right, let's put the hands into the head. So slide your arms up under your head, interlace your fingers, and we'll do a little bit of undulation here. So here we go. Oh, I'll change that. Let me change that. Let's we'll go to undulation one. So uh, again, if the blanket feels too much, just remove it. Please don't work with a hard object. If it feels unpleasant, get it out of there. Okay, the balls, just position them around those SI joints, right in the middle of your buttocks there, slightly, slightly up, slightly out, okay. And the arms are in stick them up position. So you're in stick them up position. So undulation one, we'll see if we can add the arms. So undulation one is pubic bone down, chin down. You can feel the balls rolling underneath. And then pubic bone back, chin back. Yeah, lumbar lengthens. Yeah, you really want to feel that deep scoop of the pelvis. It's a long shape. So the sacrum goes to the, uh, lumbar goes to the floor here. And then pubic bone down, chin down. There's the exhalation, that's the uh, inhalation. The abdomen extends. The abdomen really distends here. Let it open. This is pelvic floor stuff. And then pubic bone back, chin back. Tailbone to face. Face goes back. And arms go back. Now next time, pubic bone down, chin down. Can you take your hands down? So rotation of the shoulders, internal rotation. And then exhale, pubic bone back, chin back, hands back. External rotation with posterior to internal rotation. Easy does it. If it doesn't, if the balls feel too pokey, just, you know, maybe move them a little bit, maybe put them a little higher. You know, watch out. Don't be too, don't be right on anything that feels uncomfortable. And go very slow. People with the balls really sense and feel. If it feels like too much, remove the balls and just do the movement. So undulation one. Abdomen distending on the inhalation, abdomen posterior tilt, abdomen pulling together, zipping up, pulling in, okay. And then come back to neutral. And then when you feel a little closer, lift your hips a little bit, remove the balls or the blanket, and then slowly come down. And just feel, sense and feel, first day with your knees bent, Sense and feel, give yourself time. So remember, it's slow, rhythmic movement, organized by the breath, as tolerated. You keep sensing and feeling, and you respect what you sense and feel. You honor it by having less intensity or more. It really depends. It could be tired, lack of sleep. All of these things can affect uh, how we read uh, what comes into the body. So we want to be very kind with ourselves and generous, you know, generous by respecting our, you know, limits or, yeah. Okay, so there you are. Let's stretch the legs out, and arms by your side, and just said to feel. Let go. You might feel quite a bit of sensation in the legs. You may or may not, yeah, just notice. Feel what you feel or anywhere along any of the lines, really. It doesn't have to be just the legs. Okay, so we're gonna do unwinding one. So arms are out to the side, so this will feel different now. Okay, this is gonna feel really different because we've had, the, those of us that have been using so that also we're going into the side body. We're going to the lateral line, the spiral line. So now we're going to a different line, as it were. Okay? So we're going to bend up that right leg, put the foot flat on the floor, learn to use the sole of your foot. So the more active you can make the sole of the foot, the better. Keep your toes up, but keep your toe mound down. So we're, we're not trying to come up onto the heel. We've got the foot flat, the toes are up, and that stretches, that opens and extends the back body line, the, the, the diaphragm of the foot, and that's our anchor. And arms are to the side. As you inhale, you push into that foot. Let that knee come across the body. Keep the arm and the shoulder heavy. And feel the ribs are, are going back toward the floor. And then exhale to release. So it's going to feel different now that we've done all of that side body opening, all of that back body opening. So it's a slight back bend, really. So abdomen is open. Yes, yeah, sacrum is moving in. First three lumbar move in, 
ribs try to stay back, arm is heavy, so the pec major, the pec minor, the shoulder, front shoulder and armpit area opens and stretches, goes right into that side body line. So we did a lot of stuff with the balls and the arms earlier. So see if that feels different to you this week. See, sense and feel. What is it like after having done a little, just that little bit of ball work around the shoulder area? Or blanket work, I'll say balls because I can't keep repeating myself. I'm driving myself crazy, okay. Knee across, feel that abdomen soften, feel that stretching through the arm, exhaling to release. Now see, can you take that hand that you're moving away from just that little bit higher, so slightly out of diagonal, and we're going to do that external rotation. So remember, external rotation is like hitchhiking, yeah? It's like you turn your thumb that way, yeah? So we turn the thumb to the outer body, and then we're going to try to rotate from the shoulder. Arms are on the ground. So arms are on the ground, straight out. All of this is still gliding and sliding. Okay, so you press the foot down, let the knee come across, and rotate that hand toward the floor and look at that hand. And then exhale to come back. And inhale to press the foot and take the knee across. Let the arm externally rotate. Thumb goes to the wall behind you. Palm tries to go to the floor. You look back at that hand if you can. And exhale to come back. And really come back, really allow the weight of the pelvis to drop back into the floor before you start the next inhalation. So complete each and every inhalation, feel that inhalation lengthen out of it in that extension. And then as you exhale, really let go, really let the whole breath release, and really let the weight of the pelvis drop. And then again, repeat. Now the next one that we see, so you come back to center, you're going to stay on the same side and you're going to, as you take the knee across, this time you're going to reach your arm down toward the heel. Let your head fall back so that your shoulder's going away from your ear and you feel that sternocleomaster and you're starting to get some length in the neck. You know, the head sort of, it doesn't look at the hand. The hand reaches toward the heel. As the knee comes across, the hand reaches to the heel and the head falls away. And chin goes up a bit, yeah? Like in undulation one. Like in undulation one. Okay, there you go. Inhale, reach for the heel, let the head fall back. Feel that nice release of the neck. That's gonna affect the thoracic outlet, the collarbones, and how they shape and relate to the shoulder. So that rounded shoulders, yes, so it's Feel what's going on. The shoulder blade is coming into the back body, yeah, in the back. Okay, good. And then release that. And arms by your side. Stretch both legs. Sense and feel. Whoa, have a few breaths here. And notice now how much sensation, how much neurological flushing is on that side compared to the other side. Just sense and feel whatever you sense or feel. You might feel it in the scalp. So you mean, so in other words, you might feel it at the top of the body line or the bottom, yeah? Or anywhere, or anywhere all in the middle, okay? And let's do the other side. So arms out to the side, bend up the other leg, yeah? Press the foot into the floor a little bit. And lift the toes, but keep the foot down. And take a breath, let the inhale, let that knee come across the body, unwinding. One, exhale, letting yourself drop back, letting the weight of the pelvis really find the floor. Inhale, press and roll. Come to the inner edge. And exhale to release and roll back. And repeat. And just see, well, is this side, what's this side like? So we're trying to keep the ribs going back as the hip comes across and really keeping weight in the arm and shoulder so we get that pec major, that pec minor, in the arm lines, the neck, the upper part of the lateral line, going up into the neck, going up to the side of the face. So from the sole of the foot to the pinky toe, so keep the baby toe coming toward you, keep the foot in dorsiflexion, you know, dorsiflexion toes toward you and really releasing the weight of the pelvis on the recovery. So 
Don't shortchange yourself. Really get into the breath. Really allow that inhalation to reach its peak. You know, like I said, I think I may have said at other times, that once you get this rhythm, once you get used to the rhythm, you can start to play around a little bit and really kind of stay in the inhalation shape keep breathing normally but kind of hold that shape and then on the next set of ex exhalation you let yourself roll back so you can play around a little bit it's as tia says it's legal to linger you can linger in some of these shapes because they feel fantastic fall in love with this movement and then arm slightly higher and do that external rotation so knee comes across arm externally rotates palm rolls toward the floor and you look at that hand and then let yourself come all the way back to center and try to coordinate the movement of the arm and the head and the leg all at the same time so you're synchronizing the breath with the movement and all the movements with each other so the whole line gets extended and then the whole line so hydrating pulsating compression decompression rotation twisting so ringing we're ringing the tissue now we're squeezing it we're turning it and we're pulling it yeah so it's like taking two ends of a towel and squeezing them and then lengthening them at the same time that you're squeezing and twisting them you're also length pulling them apart but that's just how the fibers of the fascia work too so that's what you're doing hydrating all that fascia giving yourself a nice big cool drink of water okay and let that arm come back down by your shoulder and the next time you come across let the arm reach down toward the heel let the head fall back so that you feel a nice extension i get that a lot in my arm i'm not sure my arms are from being chronically round shouldered you know my biceps have shortened you know my because I roll forward, I've shortened that line. And so I tend to feel it more there. And of course, in my neck. But it depends on, on you know, your, your movement, your, uh, yeah. Everybody's different. We're all different. So for me, I know where I feel this. It feels like, you know, something good is happening. You know, you know something good is happening. Because now I can move my arms behind my back better. So I know there's a payoff. So, extending down to the heel, keeping the foot in dorsiflexion, keeping the feet sharp, keeping the sole of the foot extending, the heel, yep. And last one, reaching and coming back to center and letting both legs go long, arms down by side, sense and feel, neurological flushing, what's that like now? Good. Okay, we're gonna bend up both knees and we're going to do a uh, windshield wiper. So we're going to do uh, unwinding three, two. <laughs> so we're going to keep both toes lifted now. Feet are at least a hip width apart, slightly wider maybe. And then we're gonna let both legs go to the right. And if you wanna add the rotation of the opposite arm, you can and let the head look at that hand and exhale to go back to center. And do the other side. Both legs go to the side, feet are in plantar flexion. I mean, dorsiflexion, toes are toward you. Let the arm roll on the floor. So we're extending the plantar fascia of the foot. That's called dorsiflexion. I know it gets so complicated. Okay. And I think sometimes I say plantar fascia, and I mean actually dorsiflexion. Okay. Okay. Off you go. Back and forth. So knees to one side, rotating the opposite arm if you wish. Look at that hand. So now you're doing the same thing, only there's a little more added weight. Yeah, we're gonna sort that out in a minute, I hope. Okay, let's see, let's see. So this is quite nice. I really quite like getting that length in my abdomen. So for me, you know, I can feel what tissues are a little bit tight. Because I can get sensation there. I can feel something happening, okay. And then release that and quite calm everything down. Take a breath or two. Just 
check this. Okay. Okay. So we're going to do this clam now. Uh, again, you could do this. Uh, if some people will be able to tolerate this. Some people will not. I would not use a rolled blank. I don't think I'd use a rolled blank for this to be too hard. So we'll just see. Okay, so what you're going to do is your knees are together, your feet are together. Yeah, you're going to roll onto your side. Just roll onto your side, okay? And some of you are going to just do your leg like this, yeah? You're just going to do, yeah, so you're going to do knee down, foot up. You kind of roll toward your belly, and then you roll back, yeah? And that foot can either be on top of the other foot, yeah? So this is, you know... In medial rotation, there's a softening there of the hip flexors, okay, the psoas. Then I come here, there's an opening, yeah, and I roll back a little bit on my hip, yeah, and then I roll forward. Now, yeah, that's all there is to it, okay, so for now, okay. Now, people who have the ball, you're going to put the ball, you need to come up onto your side, and you're going to put the ball just behind your greater trochanter. So your greater trochanter is this big bone, you know, where your leg bone inserts into your pelvis. That's your femur. That's your femur bone. And the outside of that femur bone is your greater trochanter. And it sticks out and it's bony. And right behind it is a bit of a hollow. That's right where the glute medius and the glute maximus come together. So the ball is soft and the ball has to be in the right place. So it's in that gully. It's in that gully behind the greater trochanter, and it's a bit pokey. I can feel it. I can definitely feel it. And again, you're going to lay down. So you've got the pokey ball there, the soft pokey ball, okay? And same thing. So knee comes in, lower leg goes up. Foot comes on top of foot, and you kind of roll back. So people who have the ball, you've got to really feel it, okay? So you roll forward. Yeah, you can feel it kind of like the... If it's dehydrated a lot, it'll clunk a bit. It'll be a bit clunk here. Whoa, open. Move that a little bit. There we go. There we go. So when I come forward, I should feel the ball rolls over that group of ligaments and tendons and attachments site of the glute medius and the glute maximus. Now, the glute maximus is a bit of a culprit. So although we need it, some people have a weak glute. I do, weak glutes. And then they try, we can have really over strong glutes and they trap the glute medius. The glute medius can't do its job because the glute maximus is imposing on it. And what happens is the, that muscle, which is the glute medius is the stabilizer of the pelvis, okay? And if it's not working well, if it can't do its job, because the glute maximus is dominating, you're gonna have a problem in your hips, yeah? You're gonna have a problem, okay, sooner or later, okay? So that's it, you know? Internal rotation, medial rotation, foot goes up. This is so good for your hips, ball or no ball, this is so good for your pelvis and your hips, okay? So you're opening up here, yeah? And then you're coming in, so you're moving the femur in socket, yeah? Moving the femur, rotating it around, getting range of motion, hydrating all those tissues. Good. And then you're going to take the ball out. Yeah. And you're on your side. Yeah. And you're going to stretch. Let your top knee come higher. Let your top knee come up and stretch your bottom leg out. Stretch your other leg out, the one that had the ball. Yeah. Actually, it should be the other way around, but anyway. Uh, no, it's all right. Okay, stretch that leg, stretch that bottom leg long, okay? The top leg is bent, knee is on the floor, and if that's too strong, if, if you have a lot of limitation in your hip, you could put a bolster. So I have people in my medical class who could not do that movement easily, and what I have them do is I have them have their leg, their lower leg on a bolster, okay? So if there's some reason when you put your knee on the floor, it's painful for you, yeah, then it's too much of an ask and you need to have a bolster under your lower leg, okay? But assuming you're okay, uh, your knee is on the ground, you can come up onto your elbows and turn your belly and tuck your toe on it and turn yourself down. So now 
I'm on my, I'm prone. I'm on my belly. And I can put my hands on top of each other, my forehead on my hands. And you can just watch for a second. So on the inhalation, I'm going to let my knee go out to the side. So here I'm, I'm just trying to slide my knee away. So I'm opening up the adductors and the groin. And then as I exhale, I'm using that area, the glute, to pull back. So I open. And then I pull back. And then I open, slide away and use those big hip flexors to pull back, yeah? Deep hip rotators, I mean. Yeah, I think they both, they do, do both. I think they rotate and flex. So check my, check my anatomy works good. So nice and easy, and it's lovely, yeah? And you know, again, You could, if you have a lot of opening, you can have your ball on the inside of your thigh. And that's going to release the bottom of the adductor. You know, so the ball is in the middle of my inner thigh. And I'm rolling. Letting the ball roll. Sometimes you can put a block under it if it doesn't, you know. If you're really tight, it's not going to touch. And the ball won't touch the thigh. You have to put a block or something there to elevate the ball. You can always practice this in your own time, you know, when you're, yeah, get a little more time. Good. Okay, now from here, we're going to stretch that arm out. You're going to come back. You're going to keep the knee, if you can, keep the knee on the ground. Let's see what happens. So you're going to tuck and roll, and you're going to bring the top arm back. So you're in this kind of crocodile twist, yeah? That's called crocodile twist is called different things and different practices anyway so my arm goes back so my butt my tr trunk is going one way and my hips and my waist yes yeah, so my waist is turning so this is a spiral you know, this is a spiral this is ro deep rotation and it can be very strong on the si area yeah so this is your your length your opening those deep hip rotators. This is the piriformis, the gamillis, the deep hip rotators. We're releasing those, opening the chest, letting the shoulder, letting the, if the arm, if there's a shoulder problem, rather than having the arm straight, because that will be, it might feel too strong, keep your hand on your shoulder, and so you shorten the lever, yeah? And so instead of the arm, don't feel pulling, it, it should be, it might feel a stretch, but it shouldn't be painful. So if it is, just see so if folding your hand, elbow, and putting your hand on your shoulder takes that intensity out for you. So people with shoulder problems, be gentle. Everybody be gentle, but pay attention if there's an issue there. And then you're going to let yourself roll back. So let your knee come a little bit higher toward your face. Let your knee come up toward your face as you roll onto your back. If you can, clasp your hands behind your knee. Let your knee come to, to your chest. If it's pinching in the groin, let the knee go out to the side slightly. Just stay there for a couple breaths. Just stay there for a couple breaths. Then put that foot on the floor and slide the leg away. Arms down by your side. Sense and feel the two sides. From your head to your toe. Where do you get sensation? What's happening? Now, what is happening? Where is it happening? How does it feel? Especially feel around the side waist and both glutes. So feel the shape of your buttocks on the floor. See if one hip feels lower than the other, if one side feels longer than the other, maybe even flatter, even closer to the floor as things start to uncouple. So this is uncoupling the leg from the pelvis, the pelvis from the waist, the waist from the ribs, ribs from the shoulders, shoulders from the neck, yeah? So we're uncoupling all these big places where we can make space, we're making space. This is spatial medicine. This is spatial medicine. Sense and feel your breath. Sense and feel any sensations, neurological flushing, tingles, pulses, throbs. 
thighs, bones. Great. Let's do the other side. Okay. So other side. So how did we start? That'll be that plan. Okay. So we're gonna. I'm gonna switch myself around the other way so I can see you. <laughs> so you're on your side. So you're gonna roll. So you're on your back, right? And you're going to bend up your knees. So bend up your feet and let your knees go to the side. Let yourself roll over to your side. Hopefully that's not okay. Trying to get home. Okay. Roll over on your side. So your knees are bent. And you're going to do your plants. Okay. So you're going to internally rotate, you know, lift that foot up and then externally rotate. Yeah. You know? And it's, you know, it's pretty, and you're going to let yourself roll a little bit. So you let yourself kind of roll on your hip. So the hip, you're still getting hydration. You're still getting hydration. Um, Again, people have the balls, so you're gonna put them, lift your hip up. It's easier to come up on your elbow, and lift your hips, and then come down. So you get that ball just behind, just behind the greater trochanter. So here's the greater trochanter. Yeah? We didn't do the ch -ch 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 movements, but you can do ch -ch -ch. Yeah? And that pit, that pit where your fingers go, yeah? that is the place. It's just behind the bone. There's a little hollow before the glute starts, yeah? And there's the attachment site of all of the deep hip rotators, so. And the glute maximus, glute minimus, the piriformis, all of that whole bunch of stuff. Emily, so get the ball in the place. You'll feel it, it's a bit sensitive, but nice, nice. It's a nice, it's like, ooh, ah, but it feels good. Okay. And then knee comes down, foot goes up, let the body roll a little bit, and then foot comes down, knee goes back. Let yourself roll back on the ball. Oh my God. So one side can be a lot tighter than the other, so you can notice that too. It's like, oh, this side feels so good, or compared to the other side, oh, oh, this side feels so, oh, actually a bit much. So maybe I just need to move a little bit. So sometimes I have to move down a little bit, you know, like the ball has to go a little higher up. That's a bit better for me. So I had it a little bit too low, and it doesn't take much. A sixteenth of an inch in this stuff is massive. Yeah, so, you know, do play around with the placement of the ball and make sure that you're in a good place, yeah, that you, you can feel it, you know, sense and feel and move accordingly. You know, pay attention to how things feel. It's all about attending to the sensations. So it's the new, it's the, it's the novel sensory inform, uh, experience that informs the brain, that, in, that increases your brain mass. So it's interested in novel sensory experience, and that's what you're giving it. So these movements are designed just to do that. And it's beneficial with or without the ball, your hip roll slightly forward and then roll slightly back and people who have the balls you'll feel the ball rolling on that those big junctions there but i did promise and you know you were kind enough to get the ball so this is just a, a brief hello okay Now, good. And then we just take the ball out. So you've, you know, you've hydrated that tissue. You know, whether you have the ball or not, you've hydrated all of those tissues. And then from here, you're going to let your top knee come to the floor and stretch your bottom leg out. Stretch your, your bottom leg, the one you had the ball under. And so then that's this knee that's on top, different one, yeah? And then again, let yourself come around. So come onto your elbows and shift your body. And I tuck my toe under and I turn. So otherwise I get a twist in my knee. So I turn my belly to the floor, my toes are under, and then I just set myself up, hands on top of each other, head on hands. Now, you know, if, if like I said, if that's really uncomfortable for you, try putting a bolster or a rolled blanket under your, from your knee to your foot. If you have the balls, you can add that. You can add that dimension. So your, your knee slides out away from you as you inhale, as you exhale, you pull back. So basically hydrating one hip 
and we're hydrating the internal, the um, opposite leg on the inside. So we're releasing, we're releasing them differently. One had the ball, now this is through movement. One is doing the inside part of the leg. Remember we said it, it changes size. And you could do it on the, you know, you could play around and do it on the same side, you could, you know, you could test these things out for yourself and take what the two far wrong. Just paying attention to how pleasant that feels. The feeling of the difference between that release as you lengthen the adductors and then the hip flexors taking over and pulling the hip back. Yeah. And then, oh, okay, this is fine. Okay. So let me just re hydrate that tissue, then we start to move with it. Okay. And then from there, we'll take that ball away, yeah? And the arms, so you're going to tuck and roll. So you're going to take that hand back underneath, yeah? And then you open up. You can even slide. You can even have your two hands on top of one another and slide your arm back across your chest and open the body. That's quite a nice opening as well. We sometimes just do that. Yeah, that's another addition. Let's do it on this side. Even though we didn't do it on the other side, it won't be the end of the world. So you can have something under the head if you need to. If you have um, a bit big shoulders, you can have a folded blanket under your head and your hands are on top of one another. And you slide your top arm up your arm, over your chest, over your shoulder, back, and look at that hand. And then you can take that hand forward and slide it across your chest and slide it out and reach the top arm more. Let the knee slide with you. Let the knee slide with you and then draw it all back. So that's another, that's a variation. Okay, that's a variation that we didn't do on the other side, but it feels quite yummy. That's quite a nice thing to do. So you could do that. Anyway, this also, a lot of this movement is very yummy. Okay, so there you are with your knee hanging across. Getting some length in the quadratus laborum. Okay, so that's one of the big players of how the upper and lower body, especially in the back, how they, the ribs work with the top of the pelvis. So that muscle can often get quite contracted and in trouble and dehydrated. So you just breathe into that. So you might feel, oh, one shoulder feels a lot tighter than the other if there's pain. Just put your hand on your shoulder and see if that alleviates that because it's the length of the lever. So the further away from the body you get, the more loaded the weight becomes. So if that feels uncomfortable in your shoulder or neck, just shorten the lever. Put your hand on your shoulder. You're still getting benefit. You work with your body, with your body story, with your uh, areas that need a little more attention than others yeah we're all different and then let that knee come up a little bit so the knee is across let that come a little bit closer to your face let yourself roll onto your back oh let that knee go out a little bit so let so no pinching in the groin let that knee come out and just hold it hold it with your hand and just let it Bob it up and down a few times and plop the foot on the floor. You know, really let the bones drop. We'll learn to drop bones, drop the leg, really release it out. And arms long. Good. Okay, so we're going to roll around on our tummy again. So let's bend up the knees, uh, bend up the back knee. You're going to tuck and roll. So learn to just kind of roll onto your side and come around, tuck and roll. Okay, let's come around. Okay, now uh, some of you have a ball, some of you don't. So people who don't have a ball, you're just going to have to use your imagination. And people who have the ball, you've got to have the ball. You're going to put the ball right in the middle of the sternum. Okay, so it's not the ball. The ball is not at the xiphoid process. It's not down here. This is very, this is the solar plexus, sometimes called as the xiphoid process. It's very sensitive. Please do not have the ball there and do not have the ball at your throat. So somewhere in the middle of your chest, yeah? Now you may need to move it up or down a half an inch 
people who don't have a ball, don't worry. You just use your imagination, okay? They still do the movement, it's still beneficial, okay? So we're gonna put the ball there. You're gonna tuck your toes under, so tuck your toes and feel, when you tuck your toes, walk your toes toward your face. Walk your toes toward your face and push your heels further back than your toes. So make your heels longer. And especially people who have SI problems, it's really nice to do up slip, down slip through your heels on your tummy. It's really good for your back body line, yeah? You just do the same thing of extending the heel, one heel longer than the other. Your head is on the floor. Okay, so the ball is in place, the heels are extended, the toes are tucked under. You're gonna rest your head on your hands, and then you're gonna let your feet relax. So just uncurl your toes and be on the front of your foot, the tops of your feet. So your toes are long, okay? Long, ten, say 10 toes long, okay? And head is resting on the hands. And the ball is, you know, somewhere between the xiphoid process and your throat. And then you're gonna imagine, so first of all, you have to get used to the weight. Now this area of the body, the skin and the fascia is very tacked down onto the bone, onto the bone of the sternum. So it doesn't have a lot of movement, okay? So it's going to feel, it may feel, this is the first time you've done it, it may feel painful. So just breathe into it. Learn to melt. You feel that you want to melt over the ball, and the ball wants to melt into you. Just yield, learn to yield, learn to surrender to this, and, and then you'll, it, you'll relax, you'll relax a bit and it will soften. And then you're gonna draw a figure eight. So the figure eight is going from side to side, shoulder to shoulder, as opposed to up and down, yeah? Or figure eight or infinity sign, whatever, however you wanna visualize it. And then we go back and forth. So we, you're gonna to try to draw, a figure eight with the ball on your chest. Just go back and forth. Very nice for the. This is where the pec major joins the bones of the sternum. It's very sensitive. It can be very tight, but it's also very beneficial to get some tissue movement there because otherwise the arm lines and the shoulders and the neck stay trapped in their kind of unhealthy, unhelpful pattern. You know, most of us are a little bit, especially if you're working on a computer or if you have any shoulder injuries or anything like that, and your body compensates. It's just all part of being 20th century, 21st century body. Okay. And that's the good really so great your shoulder blades just your shoulder blades are like slipping around they're just like sloppy and slippery and just they're able to really relax here so on the one hand the pecs are getting some ooh ah attention but the shoulder blades are really slipping and sliding really let those shoulder blades be like water you know like lily pads floating, floating in the water okay and then we'll pause there just pause and then we're going to reach, okay? So we're going to tuck the toes under, extend, walk your toes toward your face, extend your heels back, really feel your pubic bone and your two hip bones really lengthen as is, yeah? Feel that connection of the three bones to the ground, yeah? The three bones, you know, the two hip bones and the pubic bone. Keep the toes curled under now. Keep the toes curled under, keep the heels extending. And we're going to lift the head. And let your arms come. Let your, you're going to lift the head and try to roll the ball forward. So with your sternum, you lift, keep your heels extending. Lift your head slightly. Don't snap the neck. So you just kind of look sort of maybe six inches in front of the hands. And you try to roll the ball forward. So I really feel a lengthening from my pubic bone to my sternum. I really feel it in my side waist. The front, in the front, in my obliques, down where they join the psoas, it's a psoas stretch, okay? And rest back down, and again, anchor the toes, extend the heels, lift the head a little bit, just look a little bit in front of you, and now start to push the ball forward, push the ball forward, roll the ball, 
Feel that length from your pubic bone to your throat. Now your shoulder blades are moving down into your back body because they've been loosened off from the ball work, from the figure eight work, yeah? Now the shoulder blades can move down into the back pockets, but your pubic bone and hip bones are anchored, so there's no crushing in your lumbar spine. You're actually moving the part that needs to move. And then down you come. Rest one more time. Take a breath, kick the heels back, ground the pubic bone and the hip bones, lift the head slightly, push into the head, roll the ball forward, let your hands come apart, come onto your elbows, there you are, in kind of quasi cobra. Yeah? Quasi cobra. From here, put your, take the ball away, put your hands by your ribs, push yourself back, and slowly, slowly take your hips back. Now, some people, it, they, they have knee problems or ankle problems. Usually it's ankle. They think it's the knee, but they feel it in the knee, but ankle tightness anyway. So if you can get your hips to go back. Now, put a bolster there. If, it, if, you, if you know that this is a compromised position for you, put a bolster between your buttocks and your heels. Let your knees come out a little bit and keep your arms long and let your head rest down. Now, put the head on a block or a ball or a bolster or a book or a brick, you know, whatever you've got handy, or your fists, you know, you don't have a prop handy, use your fists. One potato, two potato, you know, support your head. Arms extended. And buddy bones here curl down toward your heels. They don't lift up and push toward them, float up. They curl under, right posterior your tilt, pull your pubic, pull your hip bones under and learn to open up your lower back. And that action is going to do more for your lower back than you can imagine. And then slowly use your hands to come up. Now, I won't stay there too long because I know not everyone has that opening. So like I said, if you have a bolster or something, I would just say this, a lot of people, this helps a lot of people. Take up your extra blanket and just roll it a little bit. Just roll it a little bit. Take it a few, Deirdre, and a few other people. And find that this is very beneficial. So we pull the blanket. You've got a little roll, maybe an inch. You know, maybe an inch. So when you, by, by the time you roll it, maybe an inch, an inch and a half. Not very thick. Don't make it too thick, you guys. Just thin. And you pull it back into the groin area, and you pull down. And now I'm putting my femurs in traction. So I'm... When I pull down, I'm able to move my femurs away from my abdomen. So when I come forward, now, yeah, this is going to move my abdomen up, making space in my hip flexors. This is very nice. And again, you may not go quite as low. You may not go as far. That's okay. It's not about that. It's about getting the right bits to, to this opening up your lower back. This is, gonna, this is very good for lower back problems, by the way. Therapeutic. Breathe into it. So this, you know, don't have a big breakfast before this, okay? Be careful. <laughs> you wanna try to eat four, if you're gonna have a meal four hours before you do yoga, if you're, not able to do that, then have a snack, like an at two hours before, like a piece of fruit. We suggested a piece of fruit or a glass of warm milk. So like that. It could be almond milk, can it have milk? But yeah. So be careful. Digestion and squeezing the tummy don't go together. All the blood goes to the stomach and starts the digestive process. It doesn't take much. Try not to eat just before class. Sorry, call call you out like that. And then slowly come up. Use your hands, slowly come up. And let's remove that. So some people might need to use this as a little lift. So it really depends. We'll have to see what happens next. Because every position is slightly different. I'm not going to take you into the more active stuff because we won't have time to do it justice. So some of you will need to sit on yoga blocks and you might need yoga blocks for your hands. Others of you will be okay on a folded blanket and others of you are okay flat. So I'll show it and then you can decide what you need. So you're gonna sit with your legs crossed. Yeah, so this is crossed shins as opposed to crossed ankles. 
So my shins are fairly far away from my trunk and my legs, my feet are underneath my knees. I'm gonna use my fingertips on the floor. So if you, if the knees are up really high like this, yeah, and you're going into posterior tilt in your pelvis, in other words, your lower back, you're not able to sit up on your sit bones, you're going into posterior tilt. Then, yeah, and you look a bit like this, then you definitely need to get your bum up. You need to get your, get something underneath your hips to try to lift your spine, okay? So that's the important bit. Now, for everything that you lift here, you have to lift the sides as well. So let's see what happens. Let me, let me put my glasses on and see if I can see you. Oh, it really, really looks fine. Okay, so keep the shins slightly forward. Keep the, keep the heels extending. Let your fingertips come to the either side. Yeah, so you activate. Your arm lines are activated. My fingertips are down. The palm of my hand, the diaphragm of my palm is lifted. Yeah, and then I'm going to extend up my arms to stretch up the same, mirror me. Do the same arm as me. Keep the other hand out. Keep the other hand out here. Okay, and we're going to... As I reach that arm up, I push that hip down, and then I go over to the side. This is an arc. So when I go over to the side, I don't just drop into my waist. I want to feel like I'm almost going over a bar, like you're going over a bar. There's a bar there. You want to lengthen that side body as much as possible. So here you go, back into the lateral line. Ear is listening to the ceiling. So feel that you want to listen to something in the ceiling, the, the sounds of the, you know, something beautiful. Okay. And then from here, we're going to do three-dimensional. So I'm going to reach, I'm going to continue to breathe. I'm going to reach my baby finger. I'm going to keep my arm extending. I'm going to reach my top hand toward my bottom hand. So my shoulder blade at the front is opening away from my spine, and my, I'm crunching I'm, my posterior tilt. My, my ribs are moving back, so I'm rounded in my upper back. And then I'm going to push with my bottom hand and come back into that arc shape. Come back under, rotate the ribs under, rotate the ribs under. So you come back into that leaning shape and I'm gonna take the top arm over and that releases me, that releases me. And that's a soft letting go. That's a just to let go, just let go. Yeah, and then take that same, uh, uh, take the other arm up, arm up, extend, put the, uh, put the fingertips on the floor. First we go over. So this is like going over a bar. So I'm keeping my body fairly upright. Ear listens to the ceiling space around my neck. Three-dimensional, reach the top hand toward the bottom hand. Ribs go into protracted shoulders. Shoulder blade slides open. Push with the bottom hand. De-rotate, come back into that arc, come back into the half arc. Let the weight of that arm take you over to the other side. It's like a domino effect. And release, just let go. Yeah? Okay, now, and for the people who have a ball, you're gonna use a ball. If you don't have a ball, you could try um, having your rolled blanket under one hip, yeah? You could try that if it feels too strong. So you'd have the blanket this way, the long way. Let me see what I can show. I, you know, I don't know that I'd mess with it, to be honest with you. It might be too hard. I think it might be too hard. I just keep it simple. I wouldn't bother. Anyway, okay, swing your legs to the side. Okay, those were pretty good at me. Now, the hip that's down, so this leg is parallel to the front of the mat. So this is 90 and 90 uh, sitting. Well, you'll notice one hip is elevated. Probably the back hip is elevated. Yeah, that's a tight hip flexors. You're going to put the ball under the side that's already down. So you're going to lean forward, put the ball underneath the buttock of the side that's down. And I want to move the ball, so I'm right on that ischial tuberosity. I'm going to move slightly outside, so I'm going to pull my body this way. So the ball moves from my ischial tuberosity, that buttock bone, out you know, to the outer edge. So now I'm between the bone and the top of my leg. Yeah. and lift up, lift up, 
and we're going to do the same movement. So this side's already compromised. We're going to do even more. So you're going to stretch up the arm that has the ball. Stretch up the arm that has the ball under it. It's all counterintuitive, yeah? Take the other hand out slightly. You know, reach those fingertips. And now here we go over the bar. You're going to reach, reach, side arc. Okay? Big stretch here, okay? Now I rotate. Take the top hand to the bottom hand, draw the ribs back, let the shoulder blade slide. Inhale, push with the hand, unrotate, and then let the arms domino over, domino over. Release, and come back up. We'll do the same side. Arm up, arm that has the ball. As I reach my arm up, I try to push my hip down. Come over the bar, lengthen that side body, open the ribs, intercostals. This is the lateral line. Let the ear listen. Remember, it goes up into the face. So try not to crush the, keep the shoulder away from the ear. Reach the hand through. Keep reaching, keep reaching. Now we're going into the spiral line. We're changing the line. Okay, we're connecting the arms to the different lines. Now under you come, under. Open up, open the ribs, and float over the top. Float over the top, reach that hand and release. Good, those are beautiful. Now we're gonna to come to the center and we're gonna add something. So your back hand is going to come slightly off of that hip. So it's on a diagonal, mm -hmm. diagonal. Okay, so my hand is behind my hip that has the ball, that has the ball. Okay, so the side that has the ball, back hand is in line with its own hip. I, you might wanna watch this once. I lift up the hip, I start by opening the hip, the hips turn my waist, my waist turns my ribs, my ribs turn my shoulder, my arm goes in line with my ear, so it's a huge, a long, I can feel the ball, the ball is doing something under there, yeah. and then I come back, I lead with the arm, the arm leads, I kind of open my chest here, this is just easy, and this hip sits down, okay, lead with the hip, extend the whole side body, and come back, so let's do that together, okay, so hand is by your hip, okay, uh, so, whatever, so Graham, what, where's the ball, Graham? Okay, that's the arm that's back. Yes, yeah, so that's the arm that's back. Good, okay, great, beautiful. Okay, lift the hip, open the groin, start with the groin, open the groin, turn the body, rotate to the back arm. Don't let that arm impinge on the shoulder. Keep that shoulder away from your ear. Don't let it slide up. Keep it, okay, reach the arm, really reach, reach the whole body, the whole body rotates. Arm comes back, let the arm soften the ribs and that soften the groin and the hip. And back you go. Let's do it a couple times. Lead with the hip, open the hip, groin opens, abdomen turns, spine turns, ribs turn, shoulders turn, head looks out with hand, reach, and then come back, lead with the arm to come back. Let the arm come back. I would do a few of these, but we don't really have all that much time, so just lean forward. Remove the ball, and now see. See, can you feel the hips have levelized a little bit? Yes. Can you feel the hip that was up is down, even though we worked on the other side? Because you opened up the pelvic floor. And without, the pelvic floor needs to be able to do both. It needs to be hydrated. For the legs to work well, the hips to look, work well, the lower organs, the reproductive and the digestive organs to work well, for the spine to extend appreciably. Okay, beautiful. Stretch that leg out. If you feel what you feel, it's okay. It's your first time around. You may not feel much. You may feel a huge amount. Let's turn to the other side. And the other side can be very different than the first side. So, you know, we're just gonna finish, we're just gonna finish this side. We can't leave you with half the body done. So we're just gonna to have to go over a little bit. Okay, so again, lift your, so feel, feel what you feel here. So this is my compromised side. I can really feel there's a big difference here. This is not as released as the other one, but this is my stronger side. So it makes sense, there's more muscle, whatever. Okay, it makes sense to me anyway. Lift up, put the ball right on that initial tuberosity, right on it, and then kind of pull yourself over to the side. So pull yourself off of it so that you, it's now between your thigh, and your, is between your thigh, I mean between your ischial tuberosity, your ischium, and your leg, yeah, the ball's in here, okay? 
somebody's managed to get out and try to reconnect them. Oh, they're gone. Oh, okay. Okay, other side, same thing. So, ball in the correct place, feeling that pressure. Even that is quite nice, yeah? It's a relief, isn't it? Okay, so reaching that arm up. So arm, same arm as ball, yeah? So reach that arm up. So that's the leg that's in front. So I think you've got the wrong arm there. Who is that? Um, yes, thank you, Michelle. You just like to see me work, okay? So the arm that has the ball, okay? The leg is in front. And then from here, yeah, we arc over. So this arm comes out of it. You know, so you can, if you put it on a block, if it doesn't touch the floor easily, put it on the reach over. So re first of all, get length, then go over. So this is opening up. Yeah, I'm reaching that hip down, don't forget. My ear, I'm loosening my shoulder so that my ear is listening to the ceiling. And then from here, three-dimensional, I reach. I keep that continuity of the breath. I reach my fingertips toward my other hand. Let the ribs pull back. So posterior problem protraction of the upper body. Then press the bottom hand, derotate. Good. And then reach over. Let that arm take you over. Feel a nice release here. Soften. Come to your elbow if you wish. Yeah, just soften that. Huh? really release it all because it's quite intense okay what we're doing is quite strong work okay hip bone down arm up spot so now we're going to arc so three-dimensional then we really do a bit of rotating so protracting the posterior tilt the ball is twisting the fascia it's opening up all the different lines to the pelvic floor helping to increase Hydration through the pelvic floor, tissues through the fascia there, the, the tendons, the ligaments, they're just thicker fascia. And to the muscle attachments, to all those tiny little attachments to the bottom of the pelvis. I think we only did two on the other side, so let's take that hand, sorry. So take that hand behind you on a diagonal, and we'll start leading with the hip. So this hip now comes up, open that groin, let the body roll, turn, rotate, abdomen takes, Abdomen takes shoulder, rib cage, shoulders, stretch the arm, lengthen, and then to come back, take the arm. Let the arm lead the way, and let that hip soften. You know, feel that nice release as you come back, and then lead with the groin, lead with the hip. Hips take the waist, takes the ribs, shoulders, arm, and then back arm takes the chest, the shoulders, the ribs, and the hips soften down. Yeah, last one. Try to stay out of the arm and the back shoulder. That's the tricky bit. Don't let that encroach on your neck. Learn to keep that firm, keep it away from you. And then leaning forward, move the ball and see. Is there an improvement? Is there change? What's happening now? How does it feel under there? You know, how do things feel? So even without the ball, you will have gotten a movement improvement. So you have not to worry. And then we'll stretch that leg so that it can feel tight on that inside knee for some people. Stretch that leg out. And then take that leg around. Come to the center. Stay with me, last bit. You know, I'm gonna leave you seated today instead of lying down. You can lie down afterwards. So arms out to the side, we're gonna exhale. Bring the backs of your hands together. Let your, let your navel, like somebody's going to string on your navel, like a rope. They're going to pull you back. Come into posterior tilt. So, so you let the pelvis come under. Let the head come down. Inhale, arms up. Extend the spine. Exhale to open the chest. Let the shoulders drop. Let the arms come down. And same thing. Exhale, backs of the hands, posterior tilt. Let the head come toward the pubic bone. Pubic bone come toward the head. Inhale to lengthen and draw up your spine. Exhale to open your chest. Feel that you open the throat. This is the, this is the front body line that we did with the ball and the sternum. Okay, opening up and then centering the body. Let the arms float down. Last one. Backs of the hands, posterior tilt. Use your breath. 
Inhale, full, rich inhalation to open, exhalation to open the bottom of the chest, and then let the arms float down. Okay, so sitting in this position, you can elevate the pelvis. So I would suggest you pop yourself up on a block or a folded blanket or a bolster, whatever you've got handy. And as you do a little bit of tip in your pelvis, it's a good idea to have a small lift because that just gives you a little bit of anterior tilt. We don't want to drop the belly, but yeah, we do want a little bit of elevation because it helps to move those first three lumbar in, which is a good setup for your spine. And then let go. Now, if this isn't available to you, if this is too much, you can sit in Virasana. So my people who are, Graham, have either the end of your bolster or a brick or a blanket or something like that and sit in your virasana. Yeah, sit in your virasana. I'll wait for you to get there, get some height. Oh, no, I'll wait for you to get there. No, knees, not, yeah, that's it. Start on your knees. Don't, don't try to tuck under like that. It's gonna to be too stressful. Can you, can you come up like this? Come like that. That, yeah, that's it. Make sure that prop is high enough now. Get your feet flat. Get your knees in and your feet out. Yeah, and then slow. Yeah, go nice and slow. This is a great place to work with the balls, by the way. The balls behind the knees. Now, so it needs to be higher. So roll the blanket. Make it a little bit higher, Graham. Yeah, don't be afraid to get more height. So remember, if there's compression, we want to do much compression. You need to elevate the floor. Beautiful, yeah, knees in, knees in. Pull your knees in. Don't have the knees straining out like that. That's gonna hurt the meniscus. You have to take them in. That's it. So it doesn't matter how you sit. As long as you can access your spine, you can sit in a chair or on a stool. Doesn't matter. So letting the hands relax. Feeling that draping. Of the shoulders, yeah, they, they should be like a big garment you wear, a beautiful silken garment. And they allow the arms to hang. And if you have shorter arms, you need to put a blanket over your thighs and elevate the hands a bit. Or sitting in Sukhasana. Accessing the spine, just sense and feel now. Close the eyes. So rather than lying in Shavasana, you're sitting and you're feeling as the blood pressure adjusts, because it's a day class, I'd like to leave you not always flat on your back. I would like to do some standing work, but it just isn't time. Can't do it all. Okay. So feeling, where is there space? You know, I like to kind of notice the, the length between my shoulder blade, my tip of my shoulders and my cheekbones, or my ears, whichever one's easier for you to visualize. And then again, my side body from the center of my armpit to the center of my hip. My side waist, yeah. And, and then from the top of my thigh to my lower abdomen, is there space? You know, all the femurs, you know, down. Relatively. What is the breath like? What is the quality of the breath like? Where do I feel the breath? Is it just the abdomen or just the chest? Can I get that 360 degree movement all the way around the trunk? You know, all the way, all the way where it joins the spine. 360 degree breathing. Leave this space in my inner jaw, in between my cheekbones and my bottom teeth. Okay. 
the inner joints of the knees or the ankles or the groins or wherever you feel it. So looking for space, length, freedom, ease, balance, poise, equanimity. The diaphragms, are the diaphragms of the body balanced? The pelvic floor, the diaphragm, diaphragm, the throat diaphragm, the jaw diaphragm, the head diaphragm. The other ones are, you know, compromised because from the legs. In. So with a stable body, I have a stable breath. And as my breath becomes stable, my mind resting on the breath becomes stable. And my emotions become stable as a result of my mind being stable. And as the mind is stable because it's Resting on the stability of the breath, which is resting on the stability of the body. So this is conditioned co-production. This is by the arising of this that arises, by the ceasing of this that ceases. This is how I get rid of stress, pain, habitual holding, that is uh, not serving me, and move into a place of freedom where now I'm allowing the natural diaphragms and the net of the body, this fascia of the body, just support me in my life. So let the chin, so keep the chest nice and open, let the chin come down. Then open the eyes slowly. And when you feel ready, let the head come up, let the eyes look out into the world. So we have a soft focus, so the inner, Inner focus, soft drifting, soft gaze. So as always, it's a pleasure and a privilege. Uh, I feel very grateful to have been invited to share some of what I do. If you want to do more, please go on my website, www.bodyintelligence.yoga. And great thanks to everybody for attending. I'd like to hear from people about the ball work, especially Kay. Thank you. So much thank you to Kay and to Donna Kosha.